So I was thinking about adding the ghosts, but I know that what we just did was a little bit complicated and the ghosts are going to get a whole lot more complicated. So let's just take a little bit of a break and do some fun stuff. So let's go to our game manager. Um, and actually, actually we're gonna go to our script and we're gonna have public audio source siren. Now if we go back to Unity, you're going to notice the Siren audio source. So click Add Component and Audio Source. And we are going to play, actually don't play on Awake, and we're going to loop. And then under our project, go to Audio, and we're going to find Siren 1, drag it into our audio source, and then we're going to drag our audio source into our Siren variable. Now on awake, we're just going to do siren.play and save. And then we're going to load our game. Okay, so we have the siren playing. I'm just going to turn my volume down a little bit. Okay, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it, but it is playing the siren for me. So the next thing we're going to do is start collecting the power pellets. Okay, so we have the siren playing. I'm just going to turn my volume down a little bit. Okay, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it, but it is playing the siren for me. So the next thing we're going to do is start collecting the power pellets. To start, we're going to go to Pac-Man, or our player, and we're going to add a box collider 2D. And we just want to make sure this box collider is right on Pac-Man. Whoops. And actually, we we don't want to collect a pellet until we get relatively close. So let's actually make it a little bit shorter than Pac-Man. A little smaller. Right about there. Okay, so now our box collider 2D, um, actually set it to trigger, is going to be able to detect the nodes box collider as well. But remember, in order for a collision to happen, one object needs to have a rigid body. So we're gonna add a rigid body to Pac-Man and we're just gonna set his body type to kinematic. So now we're gonna go to our node controller and we're gonna make two variables, we're gonna make public bool is pellet node um, and we're going to set this equal to true and then public bool has pellet actually let's set both of these to false so is pellet node if the node contains a pellet when the game starts if the node still has a pellet. So if Pac-Man eats the pellet, has pellet is going to be set to false, um, but is pellet node will still be true. So um, you're going to notice if you go to your node game object, the pellet is a child of the node. So we can actually just see if the node has a child. So we're going to say if transform dot child count is greater than zero, then we know the node has a pellet. So we're going to say has pellet equals true is pellet node equals true so now we can go over as an example to these warp nodes they're not going to have pellets so let's just go to warp nodes left and right and we're just going to delete the pellet game object make sure you do not delete the node just the pellet Now our node controller should be able to automatically detect that these nodes specifically do not have a pellet and therefore they are not a pellet node.
So if we select the node here, you're going to see has pellet is false and is pellet node is false. But if we select any other regular node, is pellet node and has pellet is true. So that's really good. So now our nodes are aware if they currently have a pellet. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to, in our node controller, set an on trigger enter to D. And we're going to say if collision dot tag equals player. Um, whoops. And is pellet node. Then we're going to set has pellet to equal false. And then we want to disable our sprite. So we are going to add a public sprite pellet sprite. And in our awake, in here, we're going to say pellet sprite equals get component and children sprite renderer. So now we have access to our pellet sprite. Whoops, sprite renderer. Okay, so add this and add this. Um, so if our player reaches our node and it is a pellet node, has pellet equals false, and set our pellet sprite dot enabled equal to false. Okay, so now if we go back to Unity, um, we need to make sure that we set the tag of our player to be player, because right now it is on tagged. So we'll click player, we will set its tag to be player. Okay, let's load up the game and see what happens. Okay, so we are getting some errors. Um, I'm going to take a look and see what's going on. Okay, so I figured out what's going on. Basically, the nodes, because we changed our tag to player, the raycast is now picking up our player. Um, so this node right here, for example, um, is sending a raycast to the right and hitting our player and trying to say that the player is a node um, because in our movement controller or sorry our node controller near the top where we do all the raycast hits we want to say if distance is less than 0 0.4 and hits down i dot collider dot tag equals node we only want to connect with nodes not our player. And because we had it on tagged before, it wasn't even grabbing it. So then change this to hits up. And go hits right. And finally, hits left. Now in the process, of doing this. I also found another slight bug and I'm not even sure how it happened, but I'm going to show you once I start the game. So now that our raycast is only detecting our pull or our nodes, the movement should be working and we should be able to eat our pellets. But for some reason on my end, and this may not have happened on yours, but on my end, some of the pellets cannot be eaten. And I will show you why in a second. So right now, um, as we're moving around, you're going to see that this is working almost perfectly, but there are a few pellets that are not getting picked up. So I'm just going to fast forward this until we have eaten all of the pellets that we can, and there's just a few that can't be eaten left. So the solution is actually really simple. At some point, somehow, the pellet came out of the node. So you can see here the pellet is not inside of its node. So if we take our pellet and drag it into the node, um, that should automatically fix it. So I'm just going to do that for all of these. I'm not actually sure how that even happened. I might have accidentally dragged a few out. 
So that's why I'm not sure if it happened on your game or not. Drag the pellet into the node. Do the same for this one. And then this one. Okay, and now I'm just going to copy nodes. And you know what, where we're going with this. We're going to delete nodes and then paste them. And now all the nodes that we had eaten are set to false. But once we reload the game, they should be set back to true. Oh, and it looks like we have to reset um, all the things that we pointed towards those nodes since we deleted them. So we can actually just drag our right warp back into our game manager, our left warp back into our game manager. Right before we load up our game again, though, uh, we want to make sure I noticed that for some reason some of the pellets came out of our nodes. This is going to prevent them from being able to be eaten. I'm not sure how that happened, um, and it may not have happened for you, but if you scroll down, you can see uh, the pellet is out of the node. So we can just drag it back in. And we want to make sure that all of the pellets are in their nodes because any pellet that isn't in a node will bug out. So in this next section, if one of your power or if one of your pellets can't be eaten, but the rest of them can, chances are you just need to turn your game off and go look for a pellet that is not inside its node. Okay, and now we are able to move around and eat all of our pellets. So again, just make sure that you're able to eat every single one. And if you can't, then check that specific node and make sure it has its pellet inside of it. The next thing we're going to be doing after this is incrementing the score whenever we get a pellet and also making the chomp sound.